Dear friends, this week we read about the story of the spies in the desert, the reason that the Jews stayed in the desert for 40 years and wandered until we were able to enter into the land of Israel. And the story of the spies is fascinating, there's many lessons to it, and I want to discuss one of them. God tells Moses, send spies, one from each tribe, the leader of each tribe, to scout out the land and to figure out the best way to strategically conquer Israel, which God had promised he will make them successful in. And Moses chose the best and the brightest, one from each tribe. And these people set out to Israel. But as we know the story, 10 of them came back with a negative report. We will never be able to conquer. They're too strong for us. It's a lost cause. Let's just stay here in the desert and hang around and who knows what will be with us. But two of the spies, Joshua, Joshua and Caleb from the tribe of Judah, they came back with a positive report. We will achieve, we will conquer, we will take over, we will inherit the land God had promised to us. A great beginning awaits us. What separated those two from the other ten? Why did the other ten come back with negative reports? What changed? And our rabbis tell us that when the spies met reality, they saw a land that was inhabited, civilized, full of nations, kings, leaders, fortified, they got scared. Though God had promised He would make them succeed, they started to question how, and they got cold feet, and they just couldn't do it. What separated Joshua and Caleb was two events. Before they left, Joshua, Moshe's prodigy, the next leader of the Jewish people who never left his side, Moses pulled them aside and did a special prayer. Joshua, Yehoshua, he said, your name until now is Hoshea, but I'm adding the letter Yud from God's name to give you strength that you should be able to withstand the possible fears and other ideas that will get into your head when you see Israel and come back with a good report. And he made that special prayer for him. And Kalev's, our rabbis tell us that when they entered into the land of Israel, Kalev immediately was hit with some reality that would put his whole mission in question. And he immediately went to Hebron, the burial site of all our patriarchs and matriarchs, and he started to pray to God, God, give me the strength that I should overcome my fears and be able to fulfill your mission and the mission of the Jewish people. And those two came back with positive reports, with faith intact, and with a new vigor. And the truth is, the only two people, the only two adult males that made it into Israel from that generation were those two. And this is an incredible lesson for all of us. We all have great plans, visions, and dreams. We all want to become better people. We all want to be successful in our endeavors, in our business, in our work in our studies, in our Torah observance, in our being a better father, a better husband, a better wife, a better mother, a better child. But then when we start rolling up our sleeves to do the work, we see that it's not so easy, many distractions, many obstacles, and we very quickly give up. And the Torah tells us a lesson. We should never feel shy. We should never feel weak if we turn to God for help. God is our partner. Every one of us has a partner. Quietly in the shadows behind us, God is our partner to support us, to encourage us, to motivate us, to give us the strength, to give us everything we need to overcome. But He is our shadow. He follows us. We have to take the lead. Roll up your sleeves. Put in the effort. But at the same time, remember that it's not on our own ability alone, but with God's help, we will be able to achieve whatever we set to achieve. And when we have that mixed bag of our efforts and faith in God, that He will be there to help us, then we become powerful, nothing gets in our way. And this is very important for us to remember. Some people think believing in God, faith in God is weakness. When you can't do it on your own, you fall back on God. Judaism says no. Faith in God 
is actually what gives us strength and vigor to achieve beyond what we ever thought we can achieve. When we believe in God and we believe He will be there for us, we dream bigger, we aim higher, and we succeed beyond even our wildest dreams. Let's take this message, bring it into our lives. Don't be shy to undertake a new initiative for your own personal life to become better, to get more involved in your Judaism, and you will see with efforts and with faith in God, you will achieve way beyond you ever imagined and you'll be the happiest person. I want to wish you all Shabbat Shalom. God bless you all. I love you all. Candle lighting this week for Montreal is 827. All the best.